St. Quan's home for the ADD. Hey, this is Quan3217, bringing you episode 8 of Bring Your Own Cop. So let's go see how Jeb is doing. Jeb is on the dark side of Kerbal. Yes, there is a dark side. Objects have a dark side, and objects have a far side. And right now we're looking at the near side and the light side of the moon. And so the dark side and the far side are pretty much the same thing. And the only difference is that the dark side of the moon is the one that is away from the sun, and it changes as the sun goes around, as the moon goes around the earth, or as the moon goes around Kerbin. While on the other hand, the near side and the far side are always the same relative to the parent. So, how are we doing in orbit? So we're not officially in orbit yet because our periapse is still inside the atmosphere. So we're gonna get over to yeah, cancel that. Yeah, so Ohm's maneuvers is something that they brought over from that I brought over from the space space shuttle. So the Ohm's is the orbital maneuvering system. It's the two medium-sized rockets that they have on the two medium-sized rockets and those pods on the back, and those are used for these kind of major maneuvers. And OMS-1 and OMS-2, OMS-1 is what we call an insertion, and OMS-2 is a circularization. On the space shuttle, the boosters and the main engines got it into a suborbital trajectory with the apogee somewhat out of the atmosphere and the perigee well within. And they did that, one, because they weren't confident with the tuning of the main engines to begin with, and so they didn't know if they would cut off exactly when they're supposed to. But the real reason is that if they do it that way, they can dump the booster, they can dump the tank into the ocean rather than leave it in space. And that's something that they really wanted to do, so go ahead and see what we can do about getting this into the, into the future. So I'll just cancel this completely and wing it. So we're going to aim for... what the heck, we'll aim for circular. Yeah, that's close enough. It's not close enough to circular, but it's close enough to in orbit, so... This guy can ride around. So yes, the insertion burn was called Ohms 1 because it was the first time that they fired up the Ohms engines. And the sec and its target was to put the space shuttle on a transfer orbit, was to change it from its suborbital trajectory, which would follow the tank back into the ocean, into an orbital trajectory. And the periapse of this transfer orbit would be at the end of the boost, and the apoapse would be right at the target orbit. And then when they got to apoapse, then they'd fire again for the OMS-2 maneuver in order to put the spacecraft into its mission orbit. So. How you doing? Mark 1 command pod. Start data. Okay, we'll keep that. Get a crew report. Yeah, we're going to overwrite that. Five science points, five science collaboration points, and if, now the 
problem is we don't have enough power to send those down. So that's unfortunate. And what is our first hop? It's over here. We're going to call you. We're going to rename the comm network. And we're also going to rotate it so that the panels are still pointing at the sun. Gotcha. Okay. And you are now Tidris 1. And you are 1 because you are right over the... No? You're not the one that's right over the Kerbal Space Station, so you are going to be Tidris 2. Tedris 2, tracking and data relay satellite 2. You are Tedris 1. desperately need to be oriented so that you are pointing at the sun. SAS and turn on SAS so it'll get us back. And then we're gonna rotate you so that you are sunny side up. Right there. So let's go ahead and get back towards pointing pointing towards orbital north. That's a pretty common thing that spacecraft do, too. They will, especially the communication satellites, they, will, they, they usually got one or two big solar panel wings, and what they like to do is put them so that one is on the north side of the orbit and one is on the south side. And when they do that, all they have to do is rotate. They only need one joint in order to keep each one pointed close to the sun. And so that'll do. So Tedris 1, Tedris 2, and switch to and rename Tedris 3. You're pointed pretty good. Let's get your panels a little bit more. Yeah, this is something where they might have to do, some, we might end up having to do some maintenance each time because as time goes on, the direction of the sun will change as Kerbal orbits around the sun. These things are fixed relative to the stars. Now a real spacecraft would have a fixed relative to the sun, and a real spacecraft would have a sun sensor so that it, didn't, it wouldn't have to know. It could just point until the sun sensor said, hey, I'm pointing towards the sun. So we're good on all three of these. Um, what's our period? Period's good there. We're looking for uh, five hours, 59 minutes, and 9.4 seconds. And they're all good.
So there's our network. Not quite an equilateral triangle, but it's close enough. So we got Tedris 1, Tedris 2, and Tedris 3 going around the orbit in the direction that the satellites themselves orbit. We could say Tedris up, Tedris east, and Tedris west. I think I like that better. Yeah. The real Tedris system has east and west, which basically what's going on is that they have the opposite side of the equilateral triangle. So they have east and west that are very close to the horizon as seen from their ground station in New Mexico. And they've got east and west and you are east? Yes. And the Tetris satellites are also numbered. So they start from one and up to, I think they're like on 11 or 12 right now. But they're also named for their job. So it might be that Tetris 5 is east and Tetris 7 is west or something like that. So we're not going to bother with numbers. We're just going to. do things like call them ahead and behind Tedris West. So, that's a nice view. I like that one. And if this was a ComSat focused episode, that would be a great one to a great thumbnail. But it's not focus of this episode is getting Jeb home. Getting him to his ticker tape parade right down the runway at Kerbal Space Center. Now that I said that, I'm going to actually have to do it, aren't I? Okay, so we just passed through Periaps. We are officially in space. We are officially in orbit. And the Kerbal Space Center is halfway around the world. So what we're going to do is we're going to deorbit right here. And we're going to put the periaps. Now we're going to deorbit such that the periaps is Hey, that's about right. That means we've got to wait a whole nother orbit though. So what we want, no, no, we want the periaps to be downrange because we're not going to make it to periaps. Not quite that far downrange. So. I think I just gave us some up too. Yeah, we'll do it like that. And our goal is to land west of the Kerbal Space Center, somewhere on the same continent that the Kerbal Space Center is on. So, and that ought to do it for us. So, since we didn't bring an engineering chip, do a short calibration burn. Not that short. Okay. Let's turn it up. There we go. 20 second burn.
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, to fire. That'll do, pig. We are now committed to the atmosphere. So we've got almost a fully, we got more than half of our, we can probably get to the moon with this much. But we're going to cut loose all of this fuel. And we're going to do it my traditional way is I am deathly afraid of spacecraft and the stage recontacting. So the first thing we're going to do is get down to entry interface. And entry interface is the place where you have to start thinking about the atmosphere again. So for the space shuttle, they define it at 400,000 feet. So for various real entries, they'll put it at 125 kilometers, 400,000 feet. But in, in actually, it's well above the Kármán line. You don't get any significant deceleration until well below that. But they put it there because that's just when they have to start thinking about it. So we have to start thinking about it at about the about 70 kilometers where the atmosphere turns back on. And so that's what we'll do. We'll get down to 70 kilometers and you're coming home. So we're going to detach and point retrograde. Retrograde, there we go. And so it's actually kind of a cool story about how the modern reentry system was developed. And apologies for doing this all at night. So back when they were trying to get uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles to rain fiery death upon our enemies on the far side of the planet, they were trying to get these reentry vehicles and they were making them small and streamlined and the more streamlined they got, the more problems they had with reentry heating they had with these things burning up. They kept trying to do it smaller and narrower and decreasing the drag until fin finally someone got the bright idea of saying, we're going the wrong direction. We need more drag. And that's when the blunt body was invented. And the whole point of this, and it's especially useful for things that, not for bomb reentry vehicles, because a bomb reentry vehicle, they want to keep it going as fast as possible and slow it down just enough to not burn up the warhead before it explodes. And a, a warhead doesn't really care about um, g-forces or temperature, not too much or acceleration, anything like that. In fact, it likes to go fast because it's harder to intercept that way. Now, an entry, a uh, manned entry capsule or a spacecraft doesn't have to worry about being shot down. And so what they like to do is have as much drag as possible. And if you have more drag, that means you burn off more of your speed in the upper atmosphere. You have more drag, you start slowing down further up and you start slowing down further up, well, that means your acceleration isn't quite as bad and your, your heating isn't quite as bad. And you have more drag, but you end up with less stress. And that's what we're doing here. So now one thing you gotta, gotta be careful about is we're gonna turn off all of these capsules. That's one of the other things that they discovered is that these capsules are stable in two directions. And this is called stable one, and this is with the blunt end forward. So our blader is still doing fine, nothing's overheating. Jeb's still looking happy. And we are in radio blackout. Com check. This is Kerbal Space Center to Jeb. Com check. And yeah, so this is stable one. And even though 
You wouldn't think it. It turns out the center of pressure of this thing is all the way forward. Well, that actually does make sense because at hypersonic speeds, this part back here doesn't even interact with the air. The air is being shoved out of the way so violently that this is still basically in vacuum and it has no effect. And so when we think that the center of pressure being way up here, that means it'd be unstable because the center of pressure is ahead of the center of mass. And that's what a no-no in aircraft. But how it turns out is that if the spacecraft turns a little bit, then the angle on the heat shield forces it to turn back. And so it's stable in this position, even though the center of pressure is so far ahead. And the bad news is, is it's also stable nose first. Yeah, good news, sta stable tail first. That means we came down without a any guidance at all, without anything other than natural. Um, let's see, are we going to land on land? I think we're going to land inside it. Com check. Com check. Now we're landing on the wrong continent. There goes our parachute. But we are going to land on land. Which is something that I wanted because while the Americans would always land in the ocean, that makes it awful hard to put a flag where you land. And we need to name Jeb's Landing. We need a flag there. We need a stake in the ground. We want monuments to be there. We want a statue a hundred feet tall of Jeb standing there looking proud. We want a museum. We want a city. We want Jebedopolis built there. And, uh, yeah, because this is a great achievement and the first one of many towards the accomplishment of all of our space goals. Com check, com check. Why are we not getting any com? we should be. We should be getting calm. We're almost right under Tidris up. We should be getting calm from it. I bet it's just that our our wimpy little our non-existent little uh, communitron. That's a problem. No communitron. Okay. Well, we'll bring this one down. Sorry if I'm being a little bit rambly in this one. I'm trying an experiment. I'm new at this YouTube thing, and I've spent the last couple of days doing far more editing than actually playing. And that's not fun for me, and not fun for you guys. And so I've been trying to figure out how I can just keep talking, because you're supposed to talk through a Let's Play. It's really boring if you just listen to Andy Lands right at sunset, right at sunrise. So we'll have plenty of time for the helicopters to come here and get them. And yeah, anyway, so watching all of my heroes, all of the hermit hermit crafters, all of the Minecrafters, and of course Scott Manley, watching them, they they make it seem so easy, and they say, "How hard can this possibly be?" Well, it is harder than it looks. So. And it's one of those things that's easy to do, but hard to do well. And I really want to do well on this. So we'll plant a flag. Oh, you're slipping, you're slipping. Okay, site name is Jeb's Landing. First manned orbital landing. Terminated here safely. Y one D forty seven four fifty seven O five UT. Yeah, that's not when he landed, but that's when we're planting the flag. So We'll do an EVA report here, keep the experiment, and recover Jeb.
So anyway, on this YouTube experiment, we're going to try just talking in real time, seeing how that goes. Hey, we got experience! Go recover the capsule. Fly that. That's going to be hard to fly because one, it's on the ground, and two, it's got no more control. We'll just want to be inside of it when we're recovering. So, recover vessel, and let's see the bounty of science that we get back from this. So yeah, YouTube. Let's see if we can do this in one take, and not have to take twice as long to edit one of these videos as it takes to do it. So that's quite a bit of science there. So we got space in Kerbin, we got EVA report in space, and we got returned from orbit. bunch of funds from the part and finished contracts. So test splash down, test landed. I'll be happy to do that one. Test splash down. But anyway, this has been Quan3217. This will do it for the episode today. And remember, if at first you don't succeed, fly fly again.